In the 19th century, cartographers of different countries produced fairly detailed maps of the continents. It seems that there are no white spots left in the world. All the maps of the 19th century rarely contradict each other, but from this list of beautifully drawn and similar maps, the maps created by Anthony Finley are knocked out. In 1809, Anthony Finley opened a bookstore and publishing house in Philadelphia. His publishing house specialized in the publication of scientific works on botany, medicine. In 1824th year, Finley publishing house began to produce maps of the world. Finley produced many maps of world powers and they differ little from the maps of other cartographers. But in 1827th year, Finley Publishing House published an atlas of maps, with the title Selected Maps of Ancient Geography, Both Sacred and Secular. Let's take a close look at the map called the State of Nations in the Christian Era. The first thing that catches your eye is a clear division of Eurasia into two parts, and it is well highlighted in color. It is a very strange division, and it is unclear on what grounds these territories were divided, because the yellow color is painted over the territory of not only professing Christianity, but also those who have converted to Islam. Most likely, this division of Eurasia is not related to religion, but Eurasia is divided, so there were some reasons for this. The most interesting thing about this map is the inscription of an American, which is located on the territory of Siberia. It's a strange inscription, because America has never owned Siberia. Let's say Anthony Finley's publishing house released this map in order to show people how ancient cartographers imagined the world. At the beginning of our millennium, at a time when there were no majority of European countries, and the lands of Europe were occupied by Scythians and Sarmatians. There is also no Muscovy on the map. This means that this map describes the period up to the 15th century. Maybe, of course, this is true, and there is nothing mysterious about this map. It's just that Finley shows the world until the 1400th year, as you saw, the ancient cartographers, along with all the Scythians, Sarmatians, and Samoids. This version, of course, almost 100% explains the reason for creating such a map. There is only one small nuance, there is an American name on the map, even if you do not pay attention to the fact that they occupy the territory of Siberia, the Americans could not be marked on the maps of the beginning of our millennium, because America was discovered only in the 15th century, and the very concept of Americans arose only after the 15th century. So why is it that on Anthony Finley's map, Americans occupy areas of Siberia? To begin with, let's take a closer look at the island of Novoya Zemlyu. Now it looks like this, a relatively narrow island divided by a strait, but on the map of 1587th year, this island is drawn a little differently. It is no longer as narrow as in our time. There is no strait between the two parts and, judging by the inscriptions on the coastline, the island is quite well studied. And here is the map of 1599th year, the left part of the island is still well drawn, but the right one is either hidden by a glacier, or it has not been studied. Map of 1665th year, the left part of the island is clearly visible, but the right one seems to be an unexplored white spot, and there is no Matochkin Shar Strait. The situation is also repeated on the map of 1676th year. Here's what we know about Novoya Zemlya. Novoya Zemlya is an archipelago in the Arctic Ocean, the easternmost point of Europe. Novoya Zemlya consists of two main islands, north and south, separated by a strait. Presumably, Novgorod merchants discovered the new land in the 12th century. The Dutch explorer William Barents reached the coast of Novoya Zemlya in 1594th year, and in the expedition of 1596th year, he rounded the northern cape and wintered on the northeast coast. The first permanent settlement was founded in 1870. In 1943, during the Second World War, Novoya Zemlya served as a secret seaplane base of Nazi Germany. Novoya Zemlya was also used by submarines of the 13th German flotilla. In ancient times, this territory was inhabited by unknown tribes, two stone labyrinths on Yuzhnaya Island remained from them. In 1870, a small number of Germans were transported to Novoya Zemlya. In 1957th year, the number of Germans was 298 people, and they were all transported back to the mainland before the start of nuclear tests. Until the 1990s, the very existence of settlements on the island of Novoya Zemlya 
was a state secret. According to the census of 2000 of the 10th year, 2,429 people lived on Novaya Zemliu, most of whom were military personnel. It seems to be an ordinary island in the Arctic Ocean, but if you look at its coast through the Google Earth application, we will see a huge number of objects that are clearly not of natural origin. Of course, they could be attributed to the activities of the military in the middle of the 20th century, because 135 nuclear tests were conducted in the atmosphere, underwater and underground on Novaya Zemliu. There was also an explosion of the most powerful hydrogen bomb in the history of mankind with a capacity of 50 megatons, at an altitude of four and a half kilometers. Only in the Matochkin Shar Strait from 1963 to 1990, 39 underground nuclear tests were conducted in tunnels and mines under Mount Lazarev. After the 2000th year, Russia began to restore the test site by expanding the old tunnels. The Novaya Zemlya archipelago is not so small. It stretches from southwest to northeast for 925 kilometers and in many places along the coast. We see strange walls or dams. These dams are located far enough away from the nuclear test sites. The question arises, who built them and when? Novaya Zemlya has never been a port for a huge navy where a small number of people have always lived, but judging by the pictures, it looks more like a seaside town with a huge number of closed bays. Mines and tunnels in the area of the Matochkin Shar Strait are also interesting. What kind of tunnels are these, and why were they expanded or destroyed in the 2000th years? You can see for yourself these unusual dams or walls in the Google Earth program. They are almost all located on the west coast of Novaya Zemlya. Here is another interesting photo of the beginning of the 20th century. Back then there were no military bases on Novaya Zemlya, but strange pyramids are already visible. We have a strange map where the territories of Siberia are given to an American. There is the Novaya Zemlya archipelago with strange pyramids and incomprehensible structures. Nowadays, Novaya Zemlya is practically closed to visitors and an ordinary tourist is unlikely to be able to get there. And we come to the main question, what can it even mean? The Findlay map of 1827th year does not exist in a single copy. It seems that he copied it from the map of Mellish John, published in 1815. Americans also occupy the territory of Siberia on it. It seems that Siberia and America used to be one, and this does not even contradict modern historical science. The width of the strait separating the two largest continents of the planet, Eurasia and America, in the northern latitudes, is only 82 kilometers. Its depth is also relatively small, 40-60 meters. With such a shallow depth of the strait, it is enough for the sea level to drop by only a few tens of meters and the strait will close. And when the sea level drops by a hundred meters, a huge territory of the continental shelf from Tamir to the northern tip of Alaska should be exposed, and 2,000 kilometers of land will open south of the Bering Strait. Scientists called this territory Bering. The Soviet paleontologist Andrei Vladimirovich Schur in his monograph Mammal and Stratigraphy of the Extreme Northeast and North America shows that, over the past three and a half million years of the life of our planet, a land bridge between the continents has arisen several times. He found evidence in a comparative analysis of mammalian faunas in ancient sediments of the Anadir lowland. Numerous evidences of the movement of mammals on the Bering Bridge have been found. Camels migrated to the Old World on the territory of Bering and Alaska, in the opposite direction, Rossipodobni cats and hyenas. There was also a movement of ancient elephants. Horses and deer came from America to Eurasia. Scientists stretch all these mammalian migration processes into millions of years and say that Beringia finally went underwater 10,000 years ago. 10,000 years. This is a huge period of time and most likely, the territories of Beringia could not be reflected on the maps of the Middle Ages in any way, but this is if we agree with the version of scientists that Beringia went underwater 10,000 years ago. Mammoth carcasses are very often found in the tundra, and if you listen to the stories of hunters of the 19th century, then dogs were fed mammoth meat. It was just frozen meat, 
that had lain in the ground for several thousand years and had practically not deteriorated. Everyone is already used to stories about finding new mammoths in Siberia, but there is a more interesting place with animal deposits. And it's not just mammoths. Alaska of the early 20th century, there are massive developments of the upper gold carriers from the formations. The banks of rivers and lakes were eroded by bronze mines. Huge quantities of bones and sometimes animal carcasses were found under the water jets. There were so many of them that they even interfered with mining. In his book The Lost Americans, Frank Hibben describes these deposits like this. These bones are found throughout the central region of the northern Alaska Peninsula, embedded in typical Alaskan muck. When gold-bearing gravel lies under this muck, miners dig holes and shafts through the muck to get to the gold under it. In many places, the Alaska manure blanket is filled with animal bones and the remains of trees. The bones of mammoths, mastodons, several types of bison, horses, wolves, bears, and lions lie in one layer. In this frozen mass lie the twisted parts of animals and trees mixed with pieces of ice and layers of peat and mosses. The frozen muck has preserved in a remarkable way the tendons, ligaments, fragments of skin and hair, hooves, and even in some cases, pieces of meat of these dead animals. At one point north of Furban, a bulldozer was used to push melting mud into a sluice to extract gold. With each passage of the bulldozer blade through the floating mass, giant fangs and bones rolled forward like shavings. When the sun melted the black slime, the smell of several hundred tons of rotting meat spread for several miles around. Apparently, a whole herd of mammoths died in this place and fell into a pile of bones, legs, fangs, and skulls to freeze and survive to this day. Mammals were also plentiful there, most of them separated by some inexplicable prehistoric mess. According to scientists, this remnant of animals is from 10 to 50,000 years old. But here are a few facts that confuse me. Firstly, it is a large variety of animals that are collected in one layer. Yes, historical mammoths and mastodons are mixed with deer and wolves. Secondly, it is the smell that is present at the excavations, the smell of constant decomposition. Let's say all these animals died 20,000 years ago, as radiocarbon analysis shows, some kind of catastrophe occurred, during which a thick layer of Alaskan manure ground trees and animals. Then this layer was quickly frozen, and therefore, all these remains could have lain for 20,000 years. I understand that frozen meat can be stored in ice indefinitely. But here's the confusing fact that the animals found are half rotten. I wonder in what year the decomposition began? Let's say, the rotting started immediately after the disaster. Then, in 20,000 years, there would be nothing left, even if the decomposition processes had begun 1,000 years ago. Then in a 1,000 years, scientists would have found nothing but bones. Whatever date we choose, if the carcass is not found in perfect condition, it means that it was not completely frozen and slowly decomposed. There were no perfectly preserved animal parts found in Alaska they were all decomposed, and they could not have been preserved in a state of permanent decomposition for more than 200, 300 years at most. It seems to me that everything is simple. Meat is perfectly frozen and stored almost forever, or meat is poorly frozen and may not be stored for very long. In Alaska, we see the second variant with a strong smell and rotting. It means that these catastrophic events occurred only a few hundred years ago. Alaska and Western Siberia suffered a catastrophe at the same time. The level of the world ocean has risen by more than a hundred meters. At the same time, a tidal wave collected all the animals living there on the territory of Alaska and Siberia, mixed them with the remains of trees and pieces of ice, and all this froze in Siberia in a layer of permafrost, and in Alaska in a layer of so-called muck or Alaskan manure. Dozens of animal species from lynx to mammoth coexist in this layer. Most likely, the cities that were located on the territory of Beringia went underwater, and we can see their remains on the Novaya Zemlya archipelago. In this place, the cities were built on a hill, which after the rise of the ocean level 
turned into an island. Not only the northern territories were flooded, the Black Sea cities were also flooded. This is well described on the Icepick and Andrew Katihansky channel, the link is in the description. In their opinion, the waters of the Black Sea also rose to a level of about 100 meters. There are flooded cities off the coast of Crimea at this depth, which for some reason are not interesting to official science. It turns out that 300 years ago, Eurasia was united with North America by a huge isthmus more than a thousand kilometers wide, and therefore the Russians could easily develop the territory of Alaska and on ancient maps. The territories of Siberia belonged to the Americans. It is very likely that the vast expanses of Beringia, from Tamir to Alaska, were inhabited by a huge number of animals. The climate was warm, as mastodons need a large amount of plant food. Here is another very strange moment. There are almost all kinds of mammals in the Alaskan manure layer, but not a single human or ape skull has been found. And this is very strange, because nothing prevented camels and horses from coming from North America to Asia. Elephants from Africa quietly migrated to North America. But for some reason, a reasonable person did not move around these territories. It turns out that all the flora and fauna were present in these parts, but the man was not. Although a reasonable man, according to scientists, appeared 130,000 years ago, but for some reason, he did not develop the fertile lands of Beringia and Alaska. Eurasia and North America were joined into one continent not so long ago. Then huge territories went underwater. Alaska was covered with a layer of rotting manure, consisting of fragments of trees and animals. But this one, despite the fact that it was located on the territory of permafrost, for some reason was not perfectly preserved. And that's why I think that a catastrophic event occurred about 300 years ago. It can't possibly be several thousand years. Since in a few thousand years, any organic matter that has decomposition processes will disappear without a trace. Roughly speaking, 300 years ago, there was a catastrophe, but for some reason, not a single person was injured. Two conclusions can be drawn here. Or all the skulls of people from Alaska manure are hidden from us for some reason. Maybe they had an unusual skull shape. Or people did not exist at the time of these events. That's it. Watch my channel.